Hey fam, how are you doing? I've recently done videos on Nutricide, and um, I'm becoming I'm becoming more and more aware of the um, malfeasance that exists in the foodstuff industry, um, which is important that you remember most of those things which you call food, the industry that creates them does not call them food. They call them food stuff, food stuff. Um, and I, I really kick myself for not becoming more aware of this um, a long time ago. I read this book called The Invention of Capitalism, which I thought about bringing over, but I didn't. Give me one second. So I'm back. I read this book here, um, The Invention of Capitalism, which began opening my eyes to the industrialization of the food producing process, which took place rapidly in the late 1800s. And, um, shocked me. Um, there was a time period when, uh, we had a very, uh, deep, well, I guess deep is the wrong word, but we had a, um, a vibrant food market in this country. And, during the late 1800s, hundreds, literally hundreds of different types of organic natural foods were driven into extinction because they couldn't be massively produced or industrialized. The same thing is actually very true in Africa right now. The um, famine problem that Africa is having isn't a, isn't a naturally made famine problem. Um, Africans have been producing various crops for hundreds of thousands of years, which they have subsisted on. Many of them have done it not in hunter-gathering concepts or, you know, ways. No, they had farms and they produced naturally what the land could produce. Um, but with Europeans, because Europeans are control freaks and have to run everything, they have uh, encouraged Africans to stop creating those things, to stop growing those things, because, you know, you can't control them. And to instead use market-friendly items and to grow them, which ultimately is bad for the health and well-being of the ground and thus kills the soil, which requires you then to use a lot of chemicals on the soil to get it to produce more and more and more and more until finally the soil just gives out and it turns into desert. Yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at now. That stated, um, recently I bought some what I thought was organic um, ginger ale, and it's not or organic. It has high fructose corn syrup in it. So you know, ladies and gentlemen, I have been. Less cognizance. All right, so let me let me let me say it this way. A couple of years back, <clears throat> 2015, 2016, I made it my business to cut out eating and drinking anything with high fructose corn syrup. I had been trying to get away from it for years, but it is an addictive substance. Well, I had limited success, but I did have success. Now, over the last two years, um, I have become increasingly and increasingly more committed to getting rid of high fructose corn syrup. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a difficult thing to get away from because they put it in a lot of stuff. But moreover, um, your body craves it when you start getting away from it and you don't understand why you're going through these massive cravings. So um, sugars, particularly white sugar, um, your body craves it when you stop using it all the time. High fructose corn syrup is the same way. Now, I knew this was going to happen. Years ago, I watched a documentary on high fructose corn syrup and whether or not it had any, um, uh, positive benefits that anyone could actually glean from it. And, they made the argument, and now, you know, this is a white documentary. I think I watched it in 2010, 
And they made the argument that there was no health reason why, to, you know, anyone should ever use um, high fructose corn syrup. The studies are pretty darn clear that it is not good for you on a health first basis, which, by the way, that might also have something to do with why we'll never see um, why we'll never see universal medical coverage in this country because it would impact too much of the wealthy people. They would have to stop doing the crap that they're doing to poison you. And ladies and gentlemen, they're poisoning you. I recently purchased more what I thought was organic ginger ale. Only to, I should have known something was up in the beginning because they didn't have any, any organic soda that I've ever purchased. They are front and center on their packaging, where it will say 100% organic, no kind of organic, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you're paying a little bit more. You are. You're going to pay more. But it comes up, It, I mean, in bold, big letters, it says no organic stuff, or excuse me, no um, high fructose corn syrup. No non-organic materials, blah, blah, blah. You can see their ingredients. Like, they'll literally put it in, like, big print, like, ingredients. Um, I happen to buy ginger ale, so it would be, like, sparkling water, ginger, um, you know, uh, botanicals, um, and, you know, maybe lemon juice or something like that. And boom, that's it. This one, I looked and turned and turned. And all they had was the um the name of the company on it. But I was in a hurry and I was like, ah, oh, it's probably on the bottom, you know, stupid design. Let me go. So I left and I got home and I pulled one of the bottles out to, you know, I put it in the fridge, pulled out a bottle to drink it, and decided, let me look at this side panel real quick. Sparkling water, high fructose corn syrup. So I decided, you know, so let me see what I can find out about high fructose corn syrup. Let me see what I can actually find out about high fructose corn syrup. And ladies and gentlemen, I came across this this article from Connect US. 17 compelling pros and cons of high fructose corn syrup. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. You could do that. But I'm going to give you the bold points because what I realized is the pros, none of the pros, none of the pros that they list have to do with your health. All of the cons that they list have to do with your health. High fructose corn syrup, did not realize this until I was doing the research on it just now, has been banned by some countries. And it has been highly restricted by other countries. Highly restricted by other countries it is dangerous it is dangerous you want to look around and see why black folks are in the in the horrible state that they're in the crap that they eat is mostly comprised of this garbage called high fructose corn syrup which brings about inflammation it brings about insulin resistance it brings about, there was a third one that I had just read about that, like, um, oh, it's easily converted into fat? I mean, I just listed three problems that's just devastating the black community. Inflammation, insulin resistance, diabetes. And it's easily converted into fat. Nutricide, ladies and gentlemen. Nutricide. So let me just give you the bullet points. Here's the, here's the list of the pros of high fructose corn syrup. One, it provides versatility to food products when added as an ingredient. It provides versatility to food products when added as an ingredient. Two, high fructose corn syrup reduces the manufacturing costs of sweetened drinks. Notice, none of this has to do with how good it is for you. 
has to do with versatility and cost. Number three, it allows food to have superior browning levels during production. Number two, that's the second one out of three that has to do with production. The whole versatility thing is about production. Four, high fructose corn syrup offers a lower freezing point. Third one on production. All of this is production. Number five, it offers a superior level of freshness to the final food product. Four things on production. Not one on health. Number six, this ingredient provides customers with the exact foods they want. That's questionable. That's questionable. Half of the crap that it's in, I don't remember people clamoring for there to be, you know, that on the market. I think people would like potato chips if they were organic and tasted good and didn't have fruit, high fructose corn syrup in it. I know for a fact that non-high fructose corn syrup sodas taste better. Better than the high fructose corn syrup sodas. So that's, gar that's garbage. Seven. Now this is the funny one. Not every study on the evils of high fructose corn syrup uses best practices for data collection, which again, as I said, some countries have outright banned it, ladies and gentlemen. Others have restricted it heavily. So what are they talking about? Princeton reported in 200, or excuse me, in 2010, or, yeah, see, they don't even, this isn't even, <laughs> this must be this must be a funded um uh, uh an industry funded website princeton reported in a 2010 published study which reports that high fructose corn syrup caused greater weight gain than table than table sugar when fed to rats which then caused the researchers to conclude that high fructose corn syrup was fueling the obesity ep epidemic new nyu nutritionist marion nessel Nestle, by the way, N-E-S-T-L-E. -E. It's kind of ironic because I looked at Nestle and I said, wait a minute, that's a candy company name too. Don't know if they're related, by the way. Nestle critically assessed the Princeton study in this way. I'm skeptical, she said. I don't think the study produces convincing evidence of a difference between the effects of high fructose corn syrup and sucrose, that's table su uh, sugar, on the body weight of rats. Once measurements on caloric intake were added into the data, the research actually showed that the, observa that the observed differences between high fructose corn syrup and sugar with, were with statistically insignificant, or I suppose were statistically insignificant. Um, they don't go further into that, so I mean, I'm glad she's skeptical, but... That means nothing to me. Number eight, almost any food offers the potential for harm if not consumed responsibly. High fructose corn syrup is in everything. I love that argument, but high fructose corn syrup is in everything. So if not consumed responsibly, there are places in the United States where there are literal deserts where you can't get anything out uh, uh, that that doesn't contain high fructose corn syrup. So this is definitely a um, industry funded uh, site. This is definitely or somebody who's sympathetic to the industry because particularly those last two, um, not every study on the evils of uh, high fructose corn syrup uses best practices for data collection. Citing one, by the way, and a person saying that they were skeptical of it doesn't make a trend. Um, and then coming after that with almost any food offers the potential for harm if not consumed responsibly. Yes, but countries are not banning potatoes because they're harmful to people. The list of cons of high fructose corn syrup. Here's where the fun begins. This is why I'm really reading this list, because I want you to realize that they gave eight out of 17 pros. 
okay? Every single, what, two of them had to do with, um, well, one had to do with the studies that were actually saying that high fructose corn syrup wasn't good health-wise. The other one said, oh, well, almost any food offers a potential for harm. And then you had the rest. Um, uh, five of the, uh, of the remaining six had to do with production. Had to do with production. I mean, and truthfully, you could say six because I was going to say that the manufacturing cost one had to do with cost, but it's even production because the cost all, uh, the, the cost ultimately isn't helping the customer. They're still charging you a lot of money for what you're buying. It's just they're keeping the cost down so they can keep the extra money. So all of it has to do with production except for the last two. <clears throat> And I think it's funny because if they didn't add the last two, then you would have six, six um, pros versus the upcoming nine cons. List of the cons of high fructose corn syrup. It contributes an unnatural level of fructose to your regular diet. And that is true. Um. And they they try to they they try to skew this by the way by saying the fructose levels in high fructose corn syrup can be problematic for people when they are consumed at excessive levels. When you eat starchy carbohydrates such as white rice, then the food is broken down into glucose, which is the basic forms of the carbs. High fructose corn syrup is fifty percent glucose and fifty percent fructose, so half of the product requires further processing by the body to be useful. The difference between the high, and this isn't them, this is me, the difference between the high fructose corn syrup and the um, uh, the starchy carbohydrates is the starchy carbohydrates are natural. This is produced, so it's harder on the body, and that's something they won't tell you. They won't tell you. Um, this this is clearly, again, a industry um, which I should have said at the beginning. This is clearly an industry, uh, pro-industry um, website. So if you do read it, just understand it's meant to mislead you. High fructose corn syrup, number two, high fructose corn syrup easily converts into fat, and this is true. When you, concern, when you consume too much high fructose corn syrup, then the body's natural reaction is to convert the excess amount you've eaten into fat this is keep going i'll keep going here because fructose is metabolized by the liver it will turn it into stored carbohydrates of which there is limited storage capacity smaller levels of fructose burn off just fine but a large dose from baked goods or sugary carbohydrate or carbohydrated beverages can overload the liver quickly to produce higher levels of fat Now, here's the deal with that, ladies and gentlemen. Having been a person who, how can I put it, who went from a diet of mostly sugary, sweet things to nearly no sugary, sweet things to a lot of um, uh, grains, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, and was cognizant enough to watch how my body reacted to it. The fact of the matter is, when as you get older and your metabolism does slow down, your body can't process this crap that well. That's just a fact. They're trying to place blame onto the consumer. They're trying to place blame onto the consumer. Not one pro. Not one pro that they gave had to do with health. But they keep putting the responsibility of this thing onto the consumer. The fact of the matter is, if I'm eating potatoes and I'm eating the other natural carbohydrates, it's not going to cause me to want to keep eating those things excessively. This, 
literally does that. That's the difference between high fructose corn syrup and natural occurring carbohydrates. This actually does that. Number three, it is an ingredient which contains no essential nutrients. Like with other added sugars, like with other added sugars in the foods and beverages you consume each day, high, to, high fructose corn syrup does not contain any essential nutrients that contribute to your overall health. Again, like other added sugars, ladies and gentlemen, when you include this ingredient in your diet, then you have empty calories to process. This knocks out what they said previously, ladies and gentlemen. This knocks out what they said previously. Their argument was this. Remember, when you, concern, when you consume too much high fructose corn syrup, then the body's natural reaction is to convert the excess amount you've eaten into fat because fructose is metabolized by the liver. It will turn it into stored carbohydrates of which there is limited capacity or storage capacity. Similar levels of fructose burn off just fine, but a large dose from baked goods or sugary carbohydrate drinks can overload the liver quickly to produce higher levels of fat. Remember then from number one, when you eat starchy carbohydrates such as white rice, then the food is broken down into glucose, which is the basic form of the carbs. High fructose corn syrup is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. So half of the product requires further processing by the body to be useful. They are equating high fructose corn syrup with the same molecules that um, your body uses in glucose, which is from um, which uh which is from the starchy carbohydrates to what what high fructose corn syrup is made from but the high they then say the uh, fructose from this ingredient must be converted into glycogen or fat by the by the liver before it can be used as fuel it must be converted into fat first before it can be used as fuel meaning the liver must turn it into glucose no it must turn it into fat and i completely missed that the first time it must be turned into fat meaning your body needs to be able to burn that excess fat before it it has to it says, okay, the liver is going to make it into glucose, and then it's going to make it into fat, and then the body will be able to use it. Well, if it was turning it into glucose, then it would be able to use it immediately. No, it has to turn it into fat first. And if your body doesn't need the excess fat, mind you, again, in number three, they straight up tell you, when you include this ingredient in your diet, then you have empty calories to process. High fructose corn syrup is no good for you. Eating high fructose corn syrup consistently can decrease can decrease your nutrient ratio since when you eat more of it, there is less room for the nutrient-dense foods that support your health. Do you understand what I'm telling you here, ladies and gentlemen? I'm not even done. This is number three. We still got more to go. Keep going. High fructose corn syrup has links to numerous risk factors for severe disease development. There are several serious diseases which have direct links to the overconsumption of fructose. It is one of the primary drivers for internal inflation. I was telling you about that, which is associated with an increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, ob obesity and cancer when you receive insulin spikes from this ingredient then you can increase your risk of tumor growth excessive intake of high fructose corn syrup may also increase the number of advanced glycation glycos i never can say that word glycation um advanced glycation and products in your body that could contribute to cell harm or premature aging 
Even your risk of gout increases with high fructose corn syrup because of the increased, the increasement of acidic acid production. This ingredient, number five, is a key factor in the development of insulin resistance. Before the 1970s, the risk associated with insulin resistance were typically directed towards individuals who consumed too many sugar-filled products. Because high fructose corn syrup makes foods and beverage, uh, beverages cheaper and therefore more accessible, it leads to higher consumption levels today. When you have too much of it, then your body can start to develop insulin resistance. This, The way that this is structured is incorrect. This one particularly, it keeps it, it returns to that falseness that it is because you're eating too much food. You're eating too much food. Yet they tell you just a few moments earlier that this food can make you feel full, give you empty calories, and cause you not to eat the actual foods that you should be eating. In other words, it gives you empty calories and stops you from eating foods with the correct calories that you need. Number six, it can increase your levels of visceral fat. I ain't even going to read any further because we've already been covering that. There is a risk of pesticide exposure with this ingredient. Because high fructose corn syrup is an agricultural product, there is a risk that the pesticides and herbicides used on the field to produce a corn crop each year are within the sweetener. It is not unusual for farmers to use these items as a way to guarantee a harvest. Even organic farmers can use approved items in this category if you have a natural formation or formulation. When you have this byproduct, yeah, but see, the difference between organic farmer pesticides and non-organic farmer pesticides is what the non-organic people are using is deadly. I mean, the stuff is horrific. Some of the, some of the stuff that is allowed to be used here in the United States, you can't use it anywhere in the world. Un unless it's a 10 bot country who is beholden to the United States because it is so harmful to the environment. Many countries have just downright banned the stuff. And then number eight, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we still have two more. Number eight, the lower cost of um, high fructose corn syrup in the United States is due to food subsidies. Please, please. This is the cowardness of these people. It is because of the food subsidies. So it's the government's fault. If the government didn't make us do it, then we would. Ladies and gentlemen, in, I think it was 2017, the New York Times ran a couple of articles on the trend that was starting to really ramp up throughout the country. Big, huge foodstuff firms, catalogs and such were starting to lose money because people were shying away from them to go and eat more natural, organic foods. That's what they were doing. And so these companies who had seen this decline, just it was escalating over the previous five or six years. They had to start adapting and changing. So what did they do? One thing was they went to... Um, the FDA, they went to the Congress to get them to tweak what they uh, tweak the federal guidelines for what actually was organic so that some of the stuff that companies um, made could be considered organic when it really wasn't. But number two, they started redeveloping a lot of their products trying to become more organic. These folks weren't really they weren't really interested in becoming totally organic. They were just interested in people looking at them as more organic. In other words, they weren't going to the people who they were buying their material from and going, we need more organic foods. We're going to help you produce more organic foods. They just wanted people to think that they were. So this idea that it's because of food subsidies, bullcrap.
bull crap. The big companies have pushed the government to give them the subsidies, which they then use to produce this product. These people, they, they're, they're, I, ugh. anyway, number nine, you, you can find high fructose corn syrup in foods that normally wouldn't contain sugar products. That is true. That is true. There are several fruit foods that contain high fructose corn syrup, which normally wouldn't have any sweeteners added to them. So consumers do not always know what is in the foods they eat. If they don't check the ingredient list, you can find high fructose corn syrup in yogurt, salad dressing, box dinners, granola bars, ketchup, ketchup uh, nutrition bars, and coffee creamer. And that is true. But it's also true. It's also true that a lot of these things have all natural alternatives. And because all natural is becoming a lot more um, common now, prices on those all natural alternatives are decreasing. So people are able to buy them who typically didn't have the money to buy them before. I want you to have this information, this important information. I want you to be able to. Um, go back and, and you know, uh, or should I say, I want you to be able to understand why I keep talking about Nutricide, because it's real, ladies and gentlemen. It is real. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always leave them below. I am your brother, Vyamaya Peace.